In this Windows Server Basics video, we're going to discuss configuring deduplication, a technology that you can implement on Windows Server storage to increase free space. Data deduplication, often called dedupe for short, is a feature available in Windows Server that can help reduce the impact of redundant data on storage costs. When enabled, data deduplication optimizes free space on a volume. It does this by examining the data on the volume by looking for and removing duplicate data chunks. Duplicated portions of the volume's dataset are stored once and are optionally compressed for additional savings. Data deduplication optimizes redundancies without compromising data fidelity or integrity. Large datasets often have a lot of duplication, which increases the costs of storing the data. For example, user file shares may have many copies of the same or similar files. Virtualization guests might be almost identical from VM to VM. Backup snapshots might have minor differences from day to day. The space savings that you can gain from data deduplication depend on the dataset or workload on the volume. Datasets that have high duplication could see optimization rates of up to 95% or a 20 times reduction in storage utilization. The following table highlights typical deduplication savings for various content types. User documents such as office documents, photos, music, videos, etc. Estimated 30 to 50% saving. Deployment shares that host software binaries, cab files, symbols, etc. Estimated 70 to 80% saving. Virtualization libraries that host ISOs, virtual hard disk files, etc. Estimated 80 to 95%. General purpose file shares. Estimated at 50 to 60% storage saving. Once enabled for a volume, data deduplication runs in the background to identify repeated patterns across files on that volume and seamlessly move those portions or chunks with special pointers called repass points that point to a unique copy of that chunk. When optimized files are read, the file system sends the files with a repass point to the data deduplication file system filter named dedupe.sys. The filter redirects the read operation to the appropriate chunks that constitute the stream for that file in the chunk store. Modifications to ranges of a deduplicated files get written unoptimized to the disk and are optimized by the optimization job the next time it runs. You can configure the following jobs to run periodically as part of the deduplication process. The optimization job deduplicates by chunking data on a volume per the volume policy settings, optionally compressing those chunks and storing chunks uniquely in the chunk store. This job runs once every hour by default. The garbage collection job reclaims disk space by removing unnecessary chunks that are no longer being referenced by files that have been recently modified or deleted. This job runs every Saturday at 2.35 a.m. by default. The integrity scrubbing job identifies corruption in the chunk store due to disk failures or bad sectors. When possible, data deduplication can automatically use volume features such as mirror or parity on a storage space's volume to reconstruct the corrupted data. Additionally, data deduplication keeps backup copies of popular chunks when they are referenced more than 100 times in an area called the hotspot. By default, the integrity scrubbing job runs every Saturday at 3.35 a.m. The unoptimization job is a special job that should only be run manually. This job undoes the optimization done by deduplication and disables data deduplication for that volume. This job only runs when manually triggered. If you're planning to run data deduplication in a failover cluster, every node in the cluster must have the data deduplication server role installed. Before enabling data deduplication for a workload, investigate how much duplication your workload's dataset has by using the data deduplication savings evaluation tool. 
or DDP eval. After installing data deduplication, you can find this tool at c colon backslash Windows System 32 ddp evalexe DDP eval can evaluate the potential for optimization against directly connected volumes, including local drives or cluster shared volumes, and mapped or unmapped network shares. You need to have data deduplication installed for this tool to be available. Because data deduplication uses a post-processing model, data deduplication periodically needs to have sufficient system resources to complete its optimization and other jobs. This means that workloads that have idle time, such as in the evening or on weekends, are excellent candidates for deduplication. And workloads that run all day, every day, may not be. Workloads that have no idle time may still be good candidates for deduplication if the workload does not have high resource requirements on the server. To install data deduplication, run the following PowerShell command as an administrator. Install Windows feature dash name FS data deduplication. To configure a volume for deduplication, use the enable dedupe volume command and specify the usage type. The options are Hyper-V, Backup and Default. Hyper-V is for volumes that host virtualization workloads, Backup for volumes that host backup workloads, and Default for volumes that host general workloads such as file shares. Most of the time you will pick Default. To configure the settings of a volume to be deduplicated, use the set dedupe volume commandlet. You can use this command to set the minimum age of the files to be deduplicated. The default is three days. If you set it to zero days, any file on the volume can be deduplicated the next time a deduplication job is run. You can force an out of band deduplication job using the start dedupe job commandlet. Let's look at all of this in a demonstration. We start on a GUI version of server 2025 and run an administrative command prompt the same commands I'll use here will of course work on a server core system, which is a good option for hosting file and virtualization servers. We install the deduplication feature using the PowerShell command, install Windows feature. Name fs dash, data dash deduplication, include all sub feature, include all management tools. This will install data deduplication with all the bells and whistles. Now that we've installed all those tools, we can navigate to the Windows System 32 folder and run the data deduplication evaluation tool against the volume we wish to deduplicate. We run ddpeval.exe with the question mark switch to see the command line tools options. Now that we've seen the options, we can run ddpeval against the volume that we are going to deduplicate. When it scans volume E, it finds potential savings of 86%. That might be a bit optimistic, but it's good to have a ballpark figure. Next, we run the command enable dedupe volume against volume E, setting the usage type to the default. This does what it says on the tin and enables deduplication for esoteric workloads. The next thing we do is configure the deduplication properties so any file will be deduplicated not just those that are over three days in age. This is more something you do in a demo. And in general, you just go with the default of three days. We can view the automatically configured deduplication jobs by running the get dedupe schedule commandlet. This shows the built-in deduplication jobs that are automatically configured, including the background optimization job, the weekly garbage collection job, and the weekly scrubbing job. Rather than wait for these scheduled jobs to occur, we can manually trigger a job to run immediately using the start dedupe job command, setting the type to full optimization. This job starts running and we can see when we run this command that 300 files have already been optimized as the job starts. We run the command a little later and see that the number of optimized files has grown to over 2000. How long this will take will depend on the amount of data being deduplicated. 
We can also use the Server Manager console to view the deduplication status of a volume. In Server Manager, we navigate to File and Storage Services, select Volumes, and we can see that Volume E is currently at a deduplication rate of 67%. Not as great as predicted by the command line tool, but I haven't let it run very long, and this is a demo rather than production environment. In this video, you learned about deduplication on Windows Server. We'll be publishing more Windows Server Basics videos on this channel soon. If you've got a specific topic you want to see covered, leave it in the comments below.